This video was made possible thanks to CuriosityStream. Watch TLDR ad-free and get exclusive videos from us by signing up to the CuriosityStream Nebula bundle deal at curiositystream.com forward slash TLDR US. It's fair to say that the US is a pretty divided nation at the moment. The 2016 and 2020 elections were incredibly polarised, and it became increasingly difficult for voters to see eye to eye. This kind of polarisation can become dangerous in newly created countries, especially if the polarisation is split between ethnic or religious groups. The question is whether this can also be threatening for more well-established democracies like the US and if there's concern that this could bubble over into another American Civil War. When it comes to the question of whether a civil war is on the horizon, luckily for us, a book was published which attempts to answer that exact question. In the book, Walter claims that there are five preconditions for a civil war that are worth considering. The presence of an anocracy, the existence of factionalism, a dominant group who are losing their status, the loss of hope, and an accelerant, e.g. social media. So let's start with the first precondition, anocracy, which is basically a regime that's part democratic and part autocratic. Walters uses a democracy index known as polity to see whether the US has slipped from being democratic to anocratic. To put it simply, while many still believe that the US is the world's greatest democracy, this position may have started to slip. Using the index, a country with a score between positive 6 and positive 10 is considered democratic. Those between negative 6 and negative 10 are considered autocratic, with the middle zone being considered anocratic. Countries with elements of democratic rule, but where presidents have a lot of authoritarian power. The US has only been considered an anocracy once before, and that was between 1797 and 1800, when the US had a policy score of positive 5. Walter notes, though, that the US, since the January 6, 2021 riots, has dropped to a positive 5 once again, marking the first time since the 1800s that the US is, technically at least, no longer a democracy. Now, it's important to note here that Walters is using just one democracy index. There are a whole host of democracy indices you can choose from, but polity is one of the most used and most trusted in academia. That said, indexes are never perfect and always hold some bias, but irrespective of what label you put on it, the potential for democratic backsliding, the very thing a polity score tries to empirically capture, is still a constant issue in every democracy, and thus warrants examination. Moving on to the second precondition for civil war, the existence of factionalism. A country is factionalised when political parties are based on ethnic, religion or racial identity rather than broader ideology. Walter points out that a recent study looked at hundreds of countries and their level of factionalization over the last 70 years, and they found that factionalism, alongside a country being an anocracy, were the biggest predictors of whether a civil war would break out. Worryingly then, using a scale that categorizes different countries as being either fully competitive or fully repressed, Walters finds the US precisely in the factionalized middle. And she does give anecdotal evidence too. She notes that more than two-thirds of Black, Latino, and Asian Americans vote Democrat, while 60% of white Americans vote Republican. Walters even claims that the Republican Party is a predatory faction, and that the party is ethnic and religion-based, leading to its support of a populist who's pursued white nationalist policies at the expense of other citizens. She adds that a 2019 survey of 2,000 experts that rated political parties gave the Republicans a score which equated them with the Justice and Development Party in Turkey and PIS in Poland. Obviously though, as with the first precursor to civil war, this is down heavily to interpretation. There are probably already at least a few people who have written out half a comment saying that she's just a Democrat frustrated with Trump and we're biased for giving her attention. And to be fair, more recently, demographic trends in voting have started to shift across the US. Republicans have started making inroads with the African American and Hispanic communities. These slow but steady gains really served to complicate the very real factionalism that Americans experienced. 
Where these newly increased intra-racial divides lead is hard to predict, but they certainly indicate that divisions in the American electorate are enduring and deeply rooted. Moving on to the third precondition, the losing of status. Walters claims that a leader or group losing status, what she calls downgrading, is a dangerous situation and can lead to resentment, rage and ultimately war. She notes that people are sometimes willing to put up with poverty, unemployment and discrimination, but that they will not tolerate losing their status. This is even more the case with sons of the soil, those who have historically been the dominant group, with her pointing out that the sons of the soil groups are more than twice as likely as other downgraded groups to rebel. She states that white Americans can be categorized as sons of the soil, and that Trump deliberately emphasized this, playing into that base. But she notes that the best way to predict Republican support was to ask white working class voters how much power and status they felt they'd lost in the last decades, showing a real link between these factors. Again though, this is a big claim and something many people take issue with. For example, there's been working class resentment all over the political spectrum. Over the last few election cycles, American politics have seen some of the most robust labor organizing of recent decades, with lots of middle class workers concerned and disaffected. And largely, the rise of figures like Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang have been fueled by the very same downgrading and white working class resentment, which drives polarization. Whether it's predominantly right, left or middle, there's a clear rising threat, and such conditions don't bode well for the future of American politics. Moving on to the fourth precondition, the loss of hope. Now, this links pretty nicely to the previous point. Walters uses protests as an example. She claims that they can be a warning sign and they can be particularly destabilizing when they fail, as it means that citizens no longer have hope. She also points out that when a group loses power and they believe that they will not or cannot regain that power, then hope dies and can be a trigger for civil war. So has this happened in America? Well, I'm sure a lot of you have a specific event in mind, the January 6th riots. This, according to Walters, made clear that Trump supporters resent their declining status and believe that the system is stacked against them. She points out that this small group had wider support, as is demonstrated by the fact that 45% of Republicans supported the attack. But there have obviously been times of high protest and low hope in the past, and it's never resulted in a civil war before. Riots after the 1968 assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. come to mind, or during the oppressive work conditions of the 1930s. Civil strife is nothing new for the US, and with their expansive and often used protections for free speech, and relatively high acceptance of civil disobedience as a means of enacting change, there's plenty of other likely outcomes other than civil war. However, with this issue and others compounding over recent years, there's still some cause for alarm. And lastly, the final factor is the accelerant. In this particular case, it's social media and misinformation. This allows extreme groups who are dissatisfied with the system to make their views clear and garner wider support. This is something that simply wasn't possible decades ago. The real irony being that social media was originally seen as a democratizing force, something that handed power over the individual and took power away from the media tycoons. Obviously in America, Trump really used social media to his advantage and appealed to the downgraded groups. With his expulsion from office and subsequent banning from nearly all social media platforms, it remains to be seen how a lack of social media in the digital age will work to compound or alleviate the social tension Trump built his political career on. But what does all of this mean? Well, the US is factionalized and is clearly starting to undo some of its democratic institutions in such a way that, based on historic trends, means that there is a possibility that civil war could be getting closer. However, it's hard to actually say, and all of this is hypothetical. While there is some data to suggest that it could be getting closer based on historic trends, it's important to point out that a lot of this relies on subjective interpretation of terms. 
So while Walter demonstrates that the US might be on the cusp of civil war, some of her arguments are subjective. And in the end, it's not certain at all. It also depends on whether you still consider the US a democracy or not. That's not the only story you want to tell here though. Just to the south of the US is a continent that's far more peaceful. In fact, it's the most peaceful in the world, despite ongoing issues with crime, drugs and gangs. In fact, we discuss why South America is so peaceful in our latest video exclusively on Nebula, the streaming service my creator friends and I have teamed up to build so that we don't need to worry about demonetization or the algorithm. Over there you can find all of our latest videos ad-free, and exclusive ones like this one. And it's not just us either, all of your favourite educational creators are already there, like Wendover Productions, Real Life Law, Polymatter, Illegal Eagle, Half as Interesting, and many more. But wait, we said this video was brought to you by CuriosityStream, right? Well, as a platform full of the best documentaries online, they naturally love educational creators like us. As such, we've worked out a deal whereby if you sign up to CuriosityStream using the link in the description, you'll also get free access to Nebula. That's not a free trial. You'll get access to both as long as you're a member. To make things even better, for a limited time, they're offering a deal where you can get 26% off their already low price, making an entire year of both services less than $15. Less than $15 a year for all your favourite educational creators, as well as superb documentaries on a whole bunch of topics. Signing up at curiositystream.com forward slash TLDRUS or clicking the link down below not only gets you the deal, but also directly supports TLDR and educational content on the platform more generally, as well as getting you original content and an ad-free experience.